If you were a Jasmine in the movie Aladdin, would you trust this guy? Is it safe? Sure, do you trust me? What? Do you trust me? Trust can be a delicate matter, including when it relates to science, medicine, and writing magic carpets. It has to be built, gained, and kept. But that's not an impossible task. Let's meet two women who have worked really hard to build trust with other people and have made major changes in their own communities in the process. The first is Lady Mary Wortley Montague. She managed to convince people living in England in the 1700s to inject themselves with a scab. Yep, to inoculate against smallpox. The second woman is a scientist and TV producer. And among her million accomplishments is that she's best friends with elephants. Meet elephant whisperer, Paula Kahumbu. Okay, let's dive right into Lady Mary's story. Time machine? Take us to 1716, Constantinople, otherwise known as modern-day Istanbul in Turkey. In 1716, Lady Mary, her husband, England's ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, and her son moved to Constantinople, probably to enjoy amazing baklava and burek and the company of brilliant Turkish ladies who had surprisingly flawless skin, not ravaged by smallpox. Unlike its name, smallpox is no small matter. It's a bunch of rashes and sores and blisters all over your skin. It's accompanied with fever and it could be pretty deadly. Like, it killed about 3 out of every 10 people who got it. And for those who didn't die, they were left with horrible scars, and some were even blinded. Luckily, it's not a thing we have to deal with anymore because vaccination, yay! But hey, no spoilers. At some point, Mary found herself in the middle of smallpox parties. Basically, parties where someone from the community takes a wound scab, that is, dried smallpox blister scabs from someone sick with a mild case of smallpox, makes a cut on healthy people, including kids, and then adds some of the scab into it. Then they just wait to recover from a mild case of smallpox. The idea is that hopefully the kids are less likely to get it again, and this whole process is called inoculation. Note, please don't try this at home, especially with COVID. Infecting yourself or others with COVID intentionally is extremely dangerous. Now, Mary was not only fascinated by this technique, but she also noticed that smallpox was far less extreme in the Ottoman Empire than it was back in England. This was especially important to Mary because some years before, she had lost her brother to smallpox. And not long after that, Mary herself had become ill with smallpox, which left her with visible scars on her face. Eradicating smallpox for Mary was personal. Before leaving for England, Mary ran to the British Embassy surgeon and asked him to inoculate her babe under the observation of a wise Turkish lady who knew how this whole inoculation thing works. And thus, the babe was inoculated. That's how the Brits said child. Babe. When Mary went back to England, she said, Hey everyone, I found a way to protect our children, thanks to the brilliant Turkish ladies. Just take the scab and inject it into your babes. And people and some other doctors were like, Um, you? No thank you? Which kind of made sense, because why would they trust a rando saying, please inject grossness into your children? So Mary had to go to her super popular high society friend, Caroline, Princess of Wales, the future Queen of Great Britain, the Vogue magazine cover of her time, if you will. And Mary said, Listen, Carrie, um, can you maybe infect your babes with this scab in the name of science and let everyone know about it? Please? And Princess Caroline said, Girl, Mary, my muffin, sis, honey, anything for you. But I'm kind of a science nerd, so I think we need to arrange for some science trials to make sure this thing you say actually works. So Caroline got the royal surgeon to run some trials. He inoculated a few prisoners with the premise of earning their freedom. And then he ran some more trials on orphan children and had doctors watch them to make sure the inoculation was safe. Okay, pause. Honest chat. I was supposed to talk here about medical ethics. Did the prisoners know what to expect after the inoculation? How about the orphan children? What if the inoculation would have gone wrong? 
I started looking into medical experimentations, especially those done on children, orphan children, black, indigenous, Latinx, and other people of color. Medical experimentations done by the Nazis on Jewish and other people during the Holocaust. And horrible things happening to ethnic and religious communities or just for seeming different. It's a horrible place to go to. But hey, that's also the history of science. Yes, today US hospitals and researchers have rules in place to make sure that medical procedures are as safe as possible. And yes, when there are experiments that involve any risks, people are supposed to be fully informed about those risks. But we also have to remember the harmful things that the science community has done. Those things don't just vanish, and we still see different versions of them happening today. We have to remember the past and understand why different communities might find certain practices dishonest and uncaring, and then work really hard to try to rebuild that trust by demonstrating real integrity and transparency. Okay, back to the smallpox story. After Princess Caroline felt safe inoculating her babes, more royalty followed in her footsteps, and more people were like, um, if cool kid Caroline inoculates her own babes, we will do it too! You see, now that the royalty was inoculating their babes, the public felt more comfortable trusting the practice of scab injection. Of those who got inoculated against smallpox, only about 2% died, compared to about 30% who died after contracting smallpox naturally. What Mary did was immensely important. She brought back the knowledge of Turkish practices back to England. But education and access to information on their own are not necessarily enough to change behavior. Without a trusted source like Caroline, much of England would have suffered the same fate as Mary, or worse yet, her brother. Well, if there is one thing we have learned from Aladdin is that you could still lie and get the girl. Okay, no. Uh, obviously, trust is very important, and if you lie to people, then you have to work really hard to rebuild that trust, and sometimes you have to do some really extraordinary things. So, we have to get people to trust us. We have to be honest and tell them what our real intentions are. And that brings me to science communication superstar, elephant expert, Paula Kahumbu. I am from Kenya. I run a conservation organization called Wildlife Direct, and we produce a television series called Wildlife Warriors to help educate, inspire, and just bring the wonder of nature into the homes of people all across Kenya and in fact Africa. We'll get back to the trust story in a second, but first let's learn about an unlikely friendship that inspired Paula to protect the forest and its inhabitants. After finishing my PhD at Princeton, I continued teaching undergraduate courses and I would take these students all over the country, Amboseli being one of my favorite places. You have the backdrop of this majestic mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro, and these elephants that are kind of tame. They're really calm and relaxed and they're everywhere and you can get quite close to them. And one day while I was with my students, we were watching the mountain, just enjoying this afternoon, and this monumental elephant came into the scene. He was an elephant I'd never seen before. Just magnificent, huge tusks right down to the ground. And I took photographs of him and went to the Elephant Research Center and they told me, oh, that's Tim. Later, Paul and her team managed to put a radio collar on Tim so that they could know where he was going. You see, Tim was really into going to neighboring villages and steal food from the farms. So by having the radio collar, the researchers would know if he was going near any of those villages and could help dissuade him. I could always find him and he'd often be standing underneath acacia trees and if I called his name he would often you know walk up to my car and just stand there towering over me and just looking at me you know he had this like sense of full awareness of who I was he was he was unbelievable Tim would just fall asleep around Paul you know chill just fetch the ball and do backflips like ah yeah. uh, yep no 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 fetching and ball oh. Those Paula's dog? <laughs> okay. Tim and his entire family of elephants fell asleep in front of me and my crew. Eight elephants lying down, snoring for an hour in front of us. Could it be that the elephants recognized Paula's good intentions and trusted her? Maybe. Tim died of natural causes in 2020, but his memory lives on in the hearts and minds of those who loved him. But I wanted Kenyans and people around the world to know this magnificent elephant called Tim 
and perhaps his story about being this naughty elephant who wanders across the landscape, interacts with people, you know, he's relatable. In 2013, Wildlife Direct launched Hands Off Our Elephants, a conservation campaign aimed at ending the poaching crisis in Kenya. Since then, elephant and rhino poaching in Kenya has dropped by 80 and 90 percent respectively. That's awesome! But there's something deeper going on. We have separated ourselves from nature, we see ourselves differently. But when we reconnect and develop that trust, uh, we can experience something that is truly unimaginable, magical, inexplicable. Um, something that is worth more than any amount of money you could possibly pay. Paula gained Tim's trust by truly caring for him. And there's a lot of ways we can show people that we care for them. We do that all the time with our friends, by being there when they need us, by being honest with them and show them what's really in our hearts, and by listening to their long, long, long stories. As a communicator, building trust is at the heart of every interaction, every day. So when Paula approached the Maasai people for an episode of her program, Wildlife Warriors, she knew she needed their trust. The Maasai are a Kenyan tribe who have been protecting nature and as a result, the elephants. But you know, no one really likes to let a rando in their house and then spill their guts in front of them. You need to really trust them. But Paula is anything but a rando. She's like the opposite of a rando. She's more like a ran... Don't. Down near the Maasai Mara, just to the east, is a mountain range called the Loiter Hills. These hills are cloaked in this beautiful rainforest. And the people who live in that area call themselves the Loiter Maasai. And they have a very, very strong and ancient tradition and culture of defending forests. They have spiritual elders called the Laibon. They're not very old, but they just have this sense of calm. You can't actually tell how old they are. They smile a lot, they're very relaxed, and they wear traditional clothes. They seem to like look right through you. It's a very, very strange and amazing experience. It never occurred to me how important it was that people really felt my intentions. I always thought, you know, you know, it's on my CV, <laughs> you know, here are my credentials. So when I went to see them, I was trying to explain to them, you know, I've come to make this film. And they just looked at me and they said, we know, we've already accepted you. We already know that you've come here with good intentions. They could see it in my eyes, in my body language. They could hear it in my voice. They could see it in the way I interacted with other people. It was very important. Trust is really important that it's backed up by integrity and that what we say is what we're thinking, what we're doing, they're all aligned. And that people know that if I say something, it's what I'm going to do. What I'm doing is what I promised I would do. Paula has credibility. She's the expert. She shows care by listening to other people, and she shares her worthy intentions with them. She also shows integrity by telling people what is important to her and she behaves accordingly. She builds trust. And with the Maasai's trust, Paula got to learn a lot about how they protect the forest and encourage their community to do so too. How they are only allowed to collect what they need from the forest because if the forest goes, we all go. Science is valuable. It offers solutions, treatments, improvements, but none of those scientific advancements mean anything if the public, the communities, don't trust them. Building trust like Mary, Caroline, and Paula isn't just pizzazz, and it isn't just showing everyone you're smart. It's doing the hard work to show people that you're trustworthy. And for science to mean anything, for it to have true impact, the people who do science and the people who communicate science need to be worthy of people's trust.